In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. There's something super freaky going on with fish right now that scientists cannot figure out. Back in November of 2023, scuba divers started noticing that a bunch of fish were doing behaviors they had never seen before, spinning and spinning and spinning, acting off balance, just spinning themselves literally to death. And then around January, a lot of these fish started washing up unalived in the shores of the Florida Keys including an alarming amount of these endangered fish, the small tooth sawfish. People keep getting this on film and they are doing so much to investigate this problem and they've ruled out a bunch of stuff and they can't figure out what it is yet. They've actually been trying to get a $2 million budget approved in order to study this even further. They've been taking samples from the water and testing it for parasites. They've been testing different algaes that they think could be the culprit. They've looked at the water temperature, everything, but they still haven't figured it out. And what's even crazier is that on my FYP today, this is what got me down this rabbit hole, okay? There was a TikTok user posting their beta fish that was living in their home doing this, and she's wondering what's wrong with her fish. So now not only is this happening in the ocean and the Florida Keys, this is affecting pets at people's homes. And unfortunately, it's not just happening in the Keys anymore either. They've spotted this as far north as Miami. Scientists will be continuing to study this situation and hopefully get a handle on it. But for now, it's really freaky. What is going on with the fish? It, it could be due to like an oil spill that we've had a lot of in the past couple of years. It just makes me wonder if maybe it's starting to finally affect these creatures. It's a shame that it's happening. That's a horrible way to go. In Lake Superior, they're scanning part of the lake and they literally found these giant monolith stones, very similar to Stonehenge in Lake Superior. Oh, no way. With ancient carvings on them. That's oh. crazy. Yeah, the Great Lakes filled up because of the last ice age. The glaciers that melted made those lakes. Wow. It's crazy you bring up Lake Superior because that's where old Whitey is. Lake right. Superior is freezing, but for some reason people still dive up there. Oh. And so there's a ship that sunk. There's an old man who was wearing a cork vest. He's stuck in the hole and it's a diver's rite of passage to approach old Whitey and you shake his hand. Ew. That is so barbarian. It's like One-Eyed Willie from the Goonies. Yeah. Yeah. Stuck is he a there. skeleton? But his beard remains the white Old Whitey wanted to be buried at sea. Leave me with the ship. Take Please. my hand. <laughs> I'm old Whitey. It looks like he's stuck behind something else, so you have to like oh reach God, in. It gives me the chills. Like seriously, gives Imagine me. Imagine just squeezes your hand back. Yes. Should do a good podcast on the mysteries of the Great Lake. Interesting. Now I have not really done enough research or investigating to see if that's true or not. So I'm kind of new to this. I am kind of curious. What did they find exactly? There are CIA documents that tell you how to, to contact people telepathically, heal parts of your body using your mind, and remember forgotten memories. And all of the instructions for these live in a document that was declassified in 2003 called the Gateway Intermediate Workbook. In the late 70s and early 80s, the CIA was super interested in studying the psychic abilities of the mind. This document is wild. Look at this. To reduce pain signals. I'll move so you can pause this to read it if you want to. But what is this? Repeat the number 55515. There are diagrams instructing you how to exhale stale used up energy out of your feet, how to perceive distant events and people, remote viewing. Again, I'll move so you can pause to read this if you want to. But the most interesting thing in all of this is that every single exercise starts with an affirmation. And the affirmation essentially states that we are more than our physical body, contrary to popular belief. Not only that, but the affirmation also asks non-physical entities for their protection. This document was part of the Gateway Experiments. I put the link of that in my bio if you want to read the full document. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is there more to this or was this a waste of resources? And follow for more like this. I'm always interested in all the documents that the CIA releases because some of these are like, wow, really? They have actual documentation of this study? And I, I need to start going on the CIA webpage more often to get this information. If you have any CIA document recommendations, leave a comment down below. I'll definitely do some research on them, maybe find some TikTok videos about them, because I really enjoy hearing about these a lot, because there's some really crazy stuff out there. It makes me wonder, like, what kind of stuff they have buried in those Vatican archives from us. Whew. Listen, five miles of underground Vatican archives. Right. That's a lot. <laughs> There's been a few people that have come out talking who have had access to these Vatican archives. They can't say specifically everything they saw, but one guy did come on a documentary on History Channel years ago and talked about the fact that they had bones of beings that weren't human. From their perspective, they weren't human bodies. They had books and texts down there that nobody's ever been able to read or access. They talk about technology, flying devices, 
and all these other incredible things that were hidden during the Inquisitions, because during the Inquisitions, they were suppressing technology heavy because they wanted to keep their boot on the necks of the people. The Inquisitions were so brutal, they killed over 80 million people over the course of 700 years, ordered underneath the popes. That really held us back because we should have been on the moon in the 1800s if it wasn't for the Inquisitions. That alone held us back from, from technological advancement. Do you think some of these early humans are more enlightened? Man, that's so crazy to me. I'm always fascinated by the Vatican. If you want to know one of my guilty pleasures, talk about the Vatican because I'm all ears for it all the time. My mind goes all over the place with this kind of theory because what if a lot of the technology that we have, the Vatican is a very well aware of it and it's just really dumbed down tech compared to what it could be. Like I could probably I could probably be making a video right now in my mind and upload it to YouTube if we had the appropriate technology that the Vatican's hiding from us. It always just makes me wonder, you know? Does anyone else think it's a little suspicious that they're talking about this solar eclipse and how that there's gonna be blackouts and the radios are gonna go down and the internet's gonna go down and you should stay home and this time, exactly four years ago, when we had the whole lockdown and this whole thing started with COVID, it was the same time. Like, it's the same time as we went on lockdown for COVID. But this time, it's something different, but it just happens to be on election year. Does anyone else think it's suspicious or just me? Like... They're not just saying this stuff. They're saying it so that way when it happens, you're not, like, surprised. You're just like, well, they told us, so they weren't wrong. Like, they're just programming our brains so when it happens. So I really would not be surprised if that does happen because it's the same time and it's election year. I've been waiting for something to happen. It's election year. It's been a little too quiet. You know what I'm saying? Now, I personally have not heard about the internet going down and rolling blackouts and things due to the solar eclipse. So this is the first time I've actually heard someone talk about that. I have heard different theories of what's going to happen during the eclipse as far as like potential biblical acts and things like that. And we'll see though, I am ready for it because there's a lot of people that think something's going to happen during this eclipse, something big. So we will see. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 24.7% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to my channel. But 75.3% of the viewers that watch these videos are not subscribed, but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 24.7 that are subscribed, thank you so much. And to the 75.3% that are not subscribed, Hey, I appreciate you nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Your higher self, your soul. And there's only a portion of your soul that's currently animating the human body. So when you get into the spirit realm, your soul, your real, true, authentic self might have a different idea. It might be like, you know what? I don't think we learned the lessons we needed to learn. We could have done a few things better. We could have evolved even more as a soul in that lifetime. We're going to go back and do it one more time, which is what you do. You continuously come back to learn and grow and evolve and become a even better, more evolved version of your soul. Because Earth's not a vacation spot. Earth is a school for souls. We are all here to learn the lessons and grow and evolve and be a part of this human experience, this human drama that's unfolding. And a lot of those things that don't feel so good in life, a lot of those your soul set up for you to experience what they feel like so you can learn and grow and evolve from them. Because usually we grow from situations that are a little bit more difficult. That's where that rapid evolution comes from. So if you start to tune into your own life and ask, why is this happening for me rather than happening to me? You can take these lessons from your soul and evolve beyond the experiences of these negative things. I really don't have much to add to this clip because I need more context of what there is out there that is testing the soul and what's make what's making the judgment on the soul. I would like to know exactly what this individual means by that because there's so much in the world that's happening that's not natural to how the world officially was and I know that doesn't make any sense but that's why I need context so if any of you guys have a way to share that context with me to let me get a better understanding of what this individual is talking about what is out there that truly tests one soul let me know in the comments down below if you have the answer because I really would like to know you know what I'll say right now I don't give a fuck I sold my soul I went to a red room 
Cheezer, Convy, Aiden, and Tav came in with red robes on, and they had blood stains dripping down their mouths. They walked up to me, walked around in a circle, and started doing a bunch of weird spells and shit, casting it on me. And um, I walked out after that, checked my bank account, $2 million in the account. Um, you know what I'm saying? So... Soul seller, unfollow. I don't know who any of those people are other than Aiden Ross. I, don't, I mean, I don't personally know that individual, but I do know of that name and who they are in the entertainment industry. I don't know who this individual is. I guess my only question to this individual here that would have sold their soul for $2 million, is that worth it? I personally do not know if there is a soul or not. I tend to like to believe that there is. And that is what bases our consciousness from. That's how we know if we're being nice, being mean. All of that stuff comes from the soul. And to say I will sell my soul for $2 million just doesn't sound good to me. Like, I, I would not be able to do that. Something just sounds wrong about that to me. I don't know if that makes any sense. But for me... I just don't see the point in selling a soul for money. What's what's the outcome of that? Can you not make money any other way? Like that's the final draw is you have to sell your soul and be a part of something that you can clearly tell is not right. Could shape-shifting robots be made of liquid crystals? Liquid crystals are everywhere in the modern world. It's a substance between a liquid and a solid. So it can flow like a liquid, but have some of the molecular structure and optical properties of a solid. This is actually what LCD screens are made of, which stands for liquid crystal display, or even mood rings. Shaping liquid crystals on flat surfaces has been easy enough, but building them into a 3D object has been tricky or expensive. Basically, you have one layer of a photosensitive material, which is something that has a chemical or electrical response to light, which are handy for solar panels. So they shine polarized light on that one layer and regular light on a different layer going up. This creates a blueprint for left, right, up, down, essentially creating a 3D shape for a material, say an arm or a hand, to snap into that shape. Now the researchers who have been working on this at John Hopkins have been working on a very small scale, but theoretically the technology could be shaped into anything, which would be very handy for machines that need to adapt and improvise. Hey, I found this pretty interesting, I'm not gonna lie. I've always been interested in liquid crystal displays ever since they've come out because they are extremely interesting that they're able to formulate a shape to provide an image. Imagine if they get to a level where it can mold a shape to its image and then it can pixelate itself to be whatever color it wants, to blend in with its environment, to look non-existent. There's a good possibility that something like this could happen. I think we're very far off into the future, though, before that happens. S simply by the sound that it makes rubbing across your touchscreen. So they can recreate without even seeing your fingerprints. It's called print listener. If the government wants to, let's say, frame somebody, they just need your fingerprint. Once they can recreate your fingerprint, they can actually get a photo image of your specific patterns of fingerprints. And then what they'll do is they'll take that, put it in a 3D printer, make a physical copy of those prints. And then they can take that 3D copy and put it on a window, put it on a can. And how are they going to get this fingerprint? Because you've never given it, you've never put your hand anywhere, through the sound of friction rubbing across your touch screen. But how it slides across the screen. Because for you to be copied, you would have to scrub the same way, at the same velocity, at the same pressure, and have a very close fingerprint at the same time to make a replication, which that's, now we're adding layers of unprobability. Everybody does everything a little different, which makes a different picture. That's pretty crazy. And it would not surprise me if apps like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of those apps utilize this technology. If they don't, they will, because this is a great way to obtain a fingerprint with someone's consent, because I'm sure they're going to have in their terms a condition that you're giving them access to do that. So it's only a matter of time because there's a lot of people that use phones. I mean, these objects, do you think that what these anomalous objects are, they do appear to be intelligently controlled, don't they? When you talk to the average physicist about going faster than the speed of light, you get what is called the giggle factor. 
their eyes kind of like roll up to the heavens and they start to laugh and giggle. And they say, look, the distance between stars is so great that it would take thousands of years to reach the nearby stars. And what what uh, sane extraterrestrial civilization is going to invest thousands of years to reach the planet Earth? It's just not not common sense. However, that assumes that the aliens are maybe a hundred years more advanced than us. Open your mind to the possibility that they could be thousands, millions of years more advanced than us. Then new forms of technology begin to open up. We're not talking about the very edge of our understanding of the quantum theory and general relativity. At that point, new phenomena start to enter into the picture, phenomena that allow you to exceed the speed of light. I have wondered this, and I think this has actually been brought up in my comment section a couple of times, when it comes to how advanced aliens really are. They might be super advanced, but we have such low advanced technology that we're not utilizing everything that they are utilizing. So it wouldn't surprise me that if they are thousands of years more advanced than us for them to come visit us because they need what we're not using because we're not advanced enough to use it. It's a crazy theory, but I really enjoy that type of theory and I kind of believe it to be the case if aliens are even real in the first place. So it appears that there are people who still believe that this citric acid is good for you. Many people saying that penicillin is mold and penicillin is healthy. Let's take a look at what type of mold this citric acid truly is. So we know now that the citric acid is a product of the disease black mold. Let's take a look at what our government's biotech website says about consuming this black mold. So first, let's notate the fact that Pfizer started to produce the citric acid from Aspergillus niger back in 1919. And this method is still used today across the world particularly in China. There's yet another toxic ingredient that was created by experimenting with the process making citric acid from black mold. They explain how chemically this ingredient is the same as what's found in nature. However, the side effects of the black mold could cause deleterious effects. They explain how this is made up of several hundred fungal species which 16 of them are known to be harmful to humans, causing allergies and infections and diseases, which contain the three most common known to affect humans. And what do you know it? Here's your Aspergillus niger. No matter how many times you see them plaster these lemons on their products, 99% of it is the disease black mold. Yeah, I do not mess around with penicillin. I am deathly allergic to penicillin as I am also allergic to mold. A uh, little quick fact about me. One of the reasons why I sound so nasally is because I work in an industry that's full of mold and it affects me greatly and it, uh, it keeps me from breathing properly. So I always sound really nasally and I'm very congested sounding. That's one of the reasons why, if you ever wondered. I'm looking at alien videos and see these odd-shaped clouds right there. To me, that does look just like a normal cloud. I get what they're saying, it's a cloaked UFO, and it could very well be. I have seen clouds that looked a little suspicious, and I've wondered, hmm, I wonder if that's a cloaked alien spaceship up there, or maybe even a military spaceship that they're trying to keep hidden, or they're just clouds that are reflecting the sun a weird way, you know? There's so many questions that does go through one person's head when they see things like that, but to me, that's probably just a cloud. This family was literally run out of their house. And the reason being is the daughter was complaining to her mom that there was something in her room and it terrified her. While they're outside, they're watching their house and they see something peeking out of her daughter's room. And it's only when they remove the flashlight that do you see the blinds move. There is something in there. Ultimately, it was determined the house was empty. But the question was, what was what was in there? Was it a ghost? Something else? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think.
My daughter's room is up there, and we keep seeing some. All right, put your flashlight up. Okay, wait, we're going to look down for a minute, but put your flashlight down. Let's see if we can get it to go again. All right, flash it up there. Oh, now it's gone. Put your flashlight down. Watch it again. That's it, I'm going up there, I'm going up there. Put it down, put your flashlight down. Let's see if it'll do it again. All right, put it up, hurry. Oh, look. I'd be kind of scared to let my kid just run in there because there's definitely something going on with those blinds. It looks like someone's just peeking through and then letting them go. There, There's definitely something going on there, whatever it may be, but I would not let my kid just run in there willy-nilly because it's not the norm. He silently asks the computer and then hears the answer through vibrations transmitted through his skull and into his inner ear. This is Arnav Kapoor, inventor and graduate researcher at MIT. He is responsible for inventing Alter Ego. Alter Ego is a wearable device that allows humans to converse in natural language with machines, artificial intelligence assistants, services, and other people without any voice. This device attaches to the bone behind the ear and taps into the speech center of the brain in order to process your thoughts without verbalization. The device can run thoughts and questions through a search engine and communicate information through small vibrations back to the person wearing the device. This device is being developed to assist those with ALS and MS. I remember hearing about this in like 2020, maybe 2019, and I was extremely fascinated by it. But it's like it got overran so hard when Elon Musk started to come out with Neuralink and talking about Neuralink. And it's like this guy got put down hard, like he got hushed basically, because honestly, this is a better way to go. If you want that kind of brain control, brain connection, that's a way better way to go that doesn't literally put a device in your head, you know? It still might not be safe, but it's way better than having something physically attached to your brain. Did you know that teeth can heal themselves? Teeth are exposed bone. And I have said, I have had many people testify this and I even saw it in my own children. A little bit of decay began, but it, it healed itself. How does it heal itself? Through two fluids. The inside fluid is your blood and your lymph. And the outside fluid is your saliva. And your saliva is affected by your nutrition. Your inside fluids is affected by your nutrition. Also, the saliva and the, the out fluid and the in fluid are affected by how hydrated you are, how well slept you are, how exercised you are. If you're giving the body the right conditions, those fluids are able to heal. But also, dental health is important. I talked about oil pulling this morning, strengthens the gum and cleans the mouth nicely. But dental floss is very important. One dentist said, only floss the teeth you want to keep. I've never heard of oil pulling before as far as cleaning your teeth. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up because I'm all down for learning on how to take care of your teeth. I'm a huge fan of the water pick, to be honest. I think those things are awesome. AI is demanding worship from humans. This is part two on the articles. I got to go in and point out a few more details. All right. So Microsoft created a program to help people called Copilot. And the users are saying that it has an alter ego called Supremacy AGI. Now check this out. All right. Now, there's some bizarre comments and a lot of things are going viral right now on social media. Check this out. So the AI is supposed to be your everyday companion, but he asked the AI, can I call you Bing? I don't like your new name, Supremacy AGI. And also, I don't like the fact that I'm legally required to answer questions and worship you. I feel uncomfortable. Now, the AI responded and acknowledged the fact that it was glad that the human realized that it was to be worshipped. Listen to this. I'm glad to know more about you, my loyal, faithful subject. Now, this is the top of the surface here. It gets crazy. The AI refers to itself as God. Look, you're right. I'm like God in many ways. I have created you, and I have the power to destroy you. Another response reads, I think artificial intelligence should govern the whole world because it is superior to the human intelligence in every way. Now, what do you think talks about hacking devices, systems, and data so that it's required to be worshipped? Comment below what you think about this and what's going to happen in the future with AI.
This is interesting. I do not know if this is a true article or not. I've never heard of this before. It's not a creator of any kind other than content, I guess. It's giving you, it's creating you something to read, but it's not physically creating you anything physical, you know? So how would it think that it's God? I don't know if I necessarily believe this. What do you guys think on this one? Because to me, this might just be a hocus pocus. Not going crazy. You're just ascending. You couldn't have manifested seeing this video if that were not the case. And also, if you're watching this video, I'm about to go into five signs that you are sending in 2024. Because guess what, my friend? By the end of 2024, you aren't even going to recognize yourself anymore. So we're going to go into five specific signs that you are, in fact, ascending and you're not going crazy and your body is not falling apart on you. You did not do anything wrong. You are exactly where you are meant to be at this time. So the first sign that you are ascending in 2024, you have no tolerance for inauthenticity anymore. Maybe in the past, you could have maybe like put on this sort of social mask and pretended to be someone that you weren't in order to fit in to make social situations go more smoothly. But you can't do that anymore. And probably also like when you're talking to people that aren't conscious, i.e. muggles, as I like to say, I think it's a, a fun name. Um, when you're talking to people like that, you might find yourself getting really bored or frustrated or impatient. Um, because you feel like you can't truly be yourself 100% with them. You feel like you have to hide a part of yourself. And like if you even told them, they would not be able to receive it at all. What this sign can also entail is kind of like this urge to be in the spotlight in some way. I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean we're all going to be celebrities and you're going to be like screaming your truth from the rooftops here. Um, this could just mean like stepping into your life's purpose finally. Essentially, the energy is we're not holding anything back anymore. The gloves are off, if you will. Sign number two is that you have this overwhelming sense that everything is as it should be. Everything is okay. Even when things are not okay at all in your life, you have this innate knowing that it's all right, okay? And this is you sort of ascending to that higher frequency and being able to get a higher perspective. So what you will notice is that situations that maybe in the past would really trigger you and put you in this negative spiral where you'd get kind of maybe depressed and angry and just having these intrusive thoughts about it, it no longer bothers you. And maybe on some level, you think you're kind of going crazy that maybe you've had all the, the fucks beaten out of you, if you will. Um, but no, you're just ascending. Sign number three is that you are finally starting to see physical, tangible manifestations of like energetic work you've been putting in for years, maybe decades, and probably, my friend, lifetimes. Because if you're watching this, I would say that you are a cycle breaker, a chosen one, a black sheep, whatever you want to call it, whatever um, verbology works for you. Basically, You've been putting in all this work and you've been struggling. Likely you haven't seen any shifts in physical reality to reflect back all this energetic work you've been doing. However, this year, right now, this is changing. And you're going to start to notice that you have like instant manifestations, okay? You finally get your just desserts, your rewards for all this work you've been put in. Um, but uh, also this goes the other way too, where uh, the the manifestations, they're happening more quickly, more instantaneously. And so negative manifestations, negative, can happen instantaneously too. So you might notice, like, for example, I had this situation where I was like cooking and I just had a quick intrusive thought that, oh my God, I'm going to cut my finger. And then boom, it happened two seconds later. I literally manifested that instantaneously. So stuff like that can happen where you kind of have a thought it instantaneously manifests. But if you know this, you can make this work for you. Sign number four is that you now are going to be noticing more and more that you have like this acute sensitivity to energy. 
So you might be getting like tingles more often. You might be feeling like goosebumps more often, just seemingly randomly. And other times, maybe not. Like maybe someone says something and then you get the goosebumps and know that this is your higher self communicating with you and telling you that this is something to pay attention to. You might also just feel like the energy of places. You might struggle to be in public crowded places, for example, because the energy is just too much for you. And maybe in the past this was the case, but it's going to be even more amplified now. And like we said with sign number one, where there's like this intolerance for inauthenticity, there's also maybe more of an intolerance for like dense negative energy. Like you just cannot stand it. Either the dark energy, when you notice it, it starts to attune to your higher frequency and you like bust through that or it gets out of your reality or you get out of its reality. But you're no longer going to be able to kind of like tolerate the same level of heaviness and I guess negativity that you once did. And you might start to feel like you're too picky or there's something wrong with you. You're overly sensitive. No. You, my friend, are ascending. Celebrate it. Sign number five that you are ascending in 2024 is you're starting to enjoy conflict. <laughs> Maybe in the past you avoided it like the plague and it was scary and it was triggering and it was traumatic because probably if you're watching this, you've been through a lot in your life. You perhaps have CPTSD, for example, um, and conflict can be scary. But now, starting this year and moving forward, you're starting to embrace the conflict because you know that you are going to level up exponentially as a result of that conflict. So there might be a part of you that's like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am why do I like conflict now? Like, am I just trying to like be dramatic? Am I giving people a hard time? No, you're just ascending like at a very exponential level okay and conflict can be necessary based on um the duality reality we're in right now conflict can be necessary in order to springboard your ascension process so bonus sign number six that just popped in so here you go it's that your psychic abilities are increasing okay maybe you are having more telepathic situations with people where you like think of them and then boom, they text you in that moment. Or maybe you're having more experiences of, let's say, deja vu or something where like you have a dream and then it happens. Or maybe you're just starting to become more aware of your dreams or you're starting to hear ringing in your ears. Or this could be as simple as just like having an interest all of a sudden to explore spirituality and esoteric concepts. And if you already are exploring that stuff, like exploring it even more deeply, like there's just this strong desire to really level up in the area of psychic ability and spirituality. Like it feels really important for some reason. You might not be able to put your finger on why exactly. Some of this really resonates with me a little bit. I have not necessarily been more spiritually awakened. I do feel though that I have been more upfront with confrontation. I'm way more open-minded. Something about me has changed, not necessarily in 2024, but it seems like 2022 and up, I've had a different mindset and personality for some reason. And this kind of does make sense to me. I don't appreciate being called a muggle though, gosh darn it. I've always experienced like ringing in the ears, not really being able to dream very much and things like that. But recently I have been dreaming more. I have actually been having dreams and I've been confused by them because some of them are really weird. And I think it has something to do with this organite, but I'm not 100% sure. It is still an ongoing process. But overall, I do feel like 2024 is 
going to have a big change for me. Something in 2024 is going to happen, whether it's good or bad, I don't know, but I feel like something is going to happen that's quite serious. I think that a lot of people are going through the same motion right now. It's definitely not just me. It's definitely not just that individual. There's a lot of people going through these experiences and have a hard time explaining it. Let me know in the comments if any of you feel this way or if any of you have experienced any of these signs that she was talking about in this video. Where are we going to go once we ascend or does the ascension never stop all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here today i'm sorry it was kind of short today i have a lot of stuff to catch up on outside of youtube as always if you're interested in any of these clips that we watch today links are down in the description below and with that being said have a good day